Mentor and Life Ministries come out of the world. Messiah people seek the truth. Hello everybody, this is Paul Neese from Mentor Life Ministries. I have a, a radio show on a local Christian radio station and I'm going to be doing a message for them right now and this is for you as well. This is for everybody. It's based on Psalms 25 and it's based on understanding the secret of, of Yahweh is with those who fear him. And we're going to see what that means now. So if you have any comments or questions, post them below the video. And thank you for checking this out. Hello, everybody. This is Paul Neeson from Torah Life Ministries. Thank you for tuning into the program today. You can hear all of my previous messages on my website at www.torahlifeministries.org. For those of you that uh, are joining us again, you understand what I mean by Torah. And for those of you that uh, do not or have not heard before, the Torah is the foundation of the scriptures, and it's the first five books of the Bible. A lot of Christians come up to me and they say, well, I'm not Jewish, uh, so where can I get the Torah? Where can I read the Torah? A lot of them say they never read the Torah, and I say, have you ever read your Bible? Now, if the answer is no, and you call yourself a Christian, unless you're a brand new Christian and you just haven't had time to sit down and read it yet, why haven't you read your Bible? That's, that's the first question you need to ask yourself. Now, it's understanding that most people don't understand that Scripture uh, starts in Genesis, and the first five books of the Bible are known as the Torah. But Christians aren't taught that, and they think mistakenly that the Torah is some kind of Jewish book or something. No, it's your Bible, given by a wonderful Creator. And the foundation is found at the beginning, in the first five books, the instructions, or the will, or the, or the guidelines of our Father, Yahweh. So that's what the Torah is, and that's why I call it Torah Life Ministries. This is the lifestyle that we are to live. Every single word in Scripture is profitable for man. But when that was said, when, when that was said in Timothy, that every Scripture was profitable for man, there was no New Testament or re renewed covenant. All there was is what Yeshua, the one you call Jesus, taught in the church. Every single uh, time he was in the church, he taught from the guidelines and instructions of our wonderful Creator. So that doesn't take away anything else and it doesn't replace anything else, but we have to understand that's the foundation and that's where everyone else pointed to in Scripture. That's where the word came. That you know, it says in the in the Bible that the Torah was a was a schoolmaster to teach us right from wrong, to let us know if we're doing something right from wrong. And people think, well, now we should just know. No, without the word we wouldn't know, because our hearts are evil and our hearts want to listen to our flesh. But when we get his Rahadekodesh in us, his spirit in us, then we start listening uh, to that spirit and we confirm it in the word because I don't care what your heart your flesh says if the word says something opposite you know I'm gonna pick our creator's ways over your ideas and we all should because our creator is smarter than we are so the Torah is is our schoolmaster you know and we can learn from the schoolmaster and we, we we need to learn right from wrong and good from evil and a lot of people in the church today aren't taught that so I like to street evangelize often, and when I go out there, I tell people what sin is. And I remind them that they're sinning, and they need to repent. And, and they say, well, you know, how do you know we're sinners? I say, because the Word says what sin is, and you know them by your fruit. And I see what people are doing. And, you know, they say, well, are you a sinner as well? I said, yeah, the difference is I hate sin. You know, I repent. I desire not to do it. I don't make a practice of it and an excuse to keep doing it. Like many Christians I know, they say, well, you know, we, we can do whatever we want now because Yeshua died for us, so we have grace. No, you don't have grace if you have a, a heart that goes against what our Creator wants us to do and how He wants us to live. You need the Torah. You need the law. You need the guidelines and instructions so you understand, first of all, what sin is, and number two, so you don't desire to do it. It's not much that He asks for us, but the enemy tempts us. We're deceived. We're deceived to to fall into that temptation. Our flesh desires that. But we have to listen to, 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 to Him, folks. We have to listen to Him, and He speaks to us, and He speaks to us through His Word, and He gives us this information. So I want to look at today at, at Psalms 25 a little bit, which talks about this. But I, I want to make sure everyone listening here understands that even though He's given us a way to live, guidelines to live by, and things to do, we're not saved by works. Salvation comes by only one, the blood of Yeshua, who died for us so we can have a second chance. Hallelujah means praise our wonderful Creator. Praise Him for giving us Yeshua to set us free from death row, a, a, a penalty that we deserve. 
and he took for us, for every one of us. So that's first and foremost. But if you really, really uh, are, are thankful for what he did for us, and you've really accepted him with your heart, and you truly repented, you don't desire to do those things anymore. You don't want to do the things anymore. And you have remorse if you do those things, folks. And the scriptures talk about what they are. So we, 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 we look at the scripture and we look at, let's look at Psalms 25 and look at what David says. David says in Psalms 25, 4, make me known your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. That's the heart we need. You see, when we get to prayer with him, no, it's not I want this, I want that. It's not even heal this person or heal that person. He knows who needs to be healed. He knows who messed up. He knows the consequences that people are going to suffer for their own actions. No. It's, it's your will be done. If you choose so to heal this person, heal them. Why don't you let that person see and open their eyes and see where they were wrong so they can be healed through their righteousness and their repentance. So that's more of a prayer. But this is the prayer of David. Make me known your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. Okay, let me translate that to you. This is Psalm 25.4. Make me known your Torah or your guidelines or your instructions. You see, the church today, will, will, all those words, Torah, guidelines, instructions, or even your ways, the church today replaces that with law. So now if this scripture said, make me known your law, O Yahweh, teach me your laws, people would be like, well, the law is done away with. So that scripture is done away with, and they might even throw away that scripture. No, the church misuses the word law. There's two kinds of law they're talking about in the Bible. There's the man-made law, and then there's the law of our Creator, which is known as the instructions, the Torah, the guideline, or His ways. And they mix that up. And Yeshua came to do away with the, the law of man, the ways of man, the traditions of man. That's why He had such a problem with the Pharisees. Yeshua has never said not to do the Sabbath. He said, no, they're adding to the Sabbath. It says in the Bible, do not add or take away, but keep my commandments. So he says again in 25.4, Make me known your ways, O Yahweh. Teach me your paths. Best prayer right there. The be that should be in your prayer every day. That should be it. Let me know your ways. Well, read the Bible. Specifically, read the Torah. That's his ways. That's his plan. He says, I have a plan for you, and it's for, for, for good and not disaster, to offer you a future and a hope. Well, he's revealed that plan to us right in the scriptures. And he does offer us a future and a hope. And he says, Oh, Yahweh, teach me your paths. Teach me your ways. Teach me the way that I should go. There's many different paths in life that lead to, to many different things that we don't want to partake in. But there's a narrow path that leads to a narrow gate. And that narrow gate is Yeshua, the one you call Jesus. And we need to tell him to lead us to that path. And that's the path that only few choose, because it goes against what the flesh wants. It's the worldly path. It says there's a straight and narrow path that leads to the straight and narrow gate. That straight and narrow path is Torah, and that narrow gate is Yeshua, our Messiah. And only few will find it. Why? Because only few are praying, only few are looking, only few are, have righteous, a righteous heart. Only a few are thankful. Make me known your ways. Make me known your words. Make me. Make, how are we going to know this? we got to read it. We gotta meditate on it and pray about it. But what do we got today? We got uh we got people knowing more people about more things about basketball and video games than we do about the scripture. And, and how do we know his ways? And even worse, many people are deceived because they don't read their Bible of what his ways truly are. And then when you go and tell somebody, Well, are you keeping the instructions of our creator? They say, What do you mean the instructions? Well, are you keeping the Torah of our creator? They say, No, that's for Jewish people. They say, Well, are you keeping the commandments? No, those are done away with. Bible doesn't say any of that. Who's teaching you that? Who's telling you that stuff? Oh Yahweh, teach me your ways, oh Yahweh, teach me your paths. Then let's go to 20, uh, Psalms 25 5 says, Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the Elohim of my Yahshua or my salvation. Oh you, I wait on you all the day long. That's the prayer of David. That's the heart we need. Make me known your ways. Lead me in your truth, not to get ahead of him, to be led by him, to see him and follow him and teach me. A desire to learn, to learn the truth. 
And then he acknowledges, for you are the Elohim of my Yeshua. The name Yeshua, see in Hebrew, the name means something. So Yeshua is, is salvation. It's the salvation of Yahweh. That, that's the name of Yeshua. So when he says here, teach me the ways of my salvation, uh, you, know, uh, of my, you know, of my Yeshua. On you I will wait all day long. That is the heart we need, folks. That's it. And there are many people that are watching that, that go to church and they're, they're Christians, but they're, they're not doing this. They're not seeing this. They don't have a desire to do this. And then there are many good, loving uh, people out there that are just so into the world's ways. And they think, oh, there's, they could pick and choose what they want from each path. They could say, oh, this path is the way I'm going to go, but I don't like this part, so I'm going to leave this part out. And I like what this religion says, and I'm going to take these good parts and leave these bad parts out. You know, and that might please your flesh. But here's the problem. The Bible says there's only one way. There's only one way. And now you have a question. If there is only one way, what if you were, were, were wrong about it and you chose, well, there's many different ways. Is that price worth it to you? But then it says there's only one way. Well, what if you choose that way? Well, let's look at that way is. Yeshua, the Messiah. Well, what way is he telling us to live? A righteous way? What's wrong with living the way he tells us to live? What's wrong with it? Anyone that has criticism or says something's wrong with it, they just don't know the word. They don't know the Bible. His way is pure and his way is righteous. It's not the ways of this world that are just get us in trouble and their ways of darkness. His way is light. So why would somebody desire not to follow his ways? Why? I'll tell you why. Because they want to pick and choose of what pleases their flesh and what doesn't. Or what they think is right according to the world's morals and standards and not our creator's moral and standards. He created us. He created us. And when we understand we're only here for a short time, but there's an eternity out there. An eternity. And we could either spend it with him or not. And we have a choice. And that choice is based on a simple decision. Do we trust him? And do we trust our creator who said he formed us in the womb and knows every hair on our head? And we have to trust that he is smarter than we are. And why cannot we do that? Because we want to mess with the dangerous things of this world instead of the pureness of his word. And that's what we desire. We desire and we, and we get pleased by the things of this world. But we need to pray that, that his ways are known to us. And I pray that he opens my friend's eyes out there that don't see these things. I didn't see these things growing up until I read the Bible and I prayed this to him and he did open my eyes. And now I hate the person I once was and the things I once desired. And now I love who I am because now I'm letting him lead my path. He says, lead me in your truth and teach me for you are the Elohim of my salvation. On you I wait all day long. You see, folks, we have an eternity out there, an eternity, and we're only here a short time. Yes, he wants us to take care of our temple. He wants us to have good health and energy, but not so we could partake in the evil things of this world, so we can go out there and tell people about him and his ways and eternity that he wait, awaits us. We go down to Psalms 25, 8. It says, the good and upright, a good and upright is Yahweh our Elohim. Therefore, he will teach sinners in the way. So we hear that. That Psalms 25, 8. Good and upright is our creator. Therefore, he will teach sinners in a way. Why is he going to teach sinners? Because he's good and upright. He gave us Yeshua, somebody we did not deserve to die for us because he is good and upright. And he will teach sinners in the way. Now, who is a sinner? I will submit to you that whether you call yourself a Christian, whether you go to church, whether you, whether, whether, whether you call yourself a New Ager, it doesn't matter. The Bible is clear. If you're consistently making a practice about living against his guidelines and instructions, that is what sin is, and you are a sinner. And the majority of the people out there are sinners. That's why it says the path is narrow, and only few will find it. Because most people don't want to admit their sin is. And if you're not going to admit you're a sinner, then you don't have to admit that you have a reason to repent. But when you repent and become anew in Yeshua, your heart begins to change. So sin is transgression of the law. Well, Christians come up to me and they say, well, I'm not a sinner. I, I follow the guideline of destructive our creator. You don't even know what the Torah is. You don't even know what the first five Bibles, are, the first five books of the Bibles are. And if you do, are you following them? And they say, well, I, 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 I don't think we need to do all of them. Well, thank you for telling me what you think, but what does the Bible say? It says, do not add or take away, but keep my commandments. That's what it says. And the fourth commandment is the Sabbath. The majority of the people in the church are doing that. 
they decide they're going to change to a different day based on history of an evil man named Constantine who killed people for following our Creator's words. And they desire to follow that. And then they desire to take partake in the, the evil pagan holidays of Easter, of Christmas, and all these other evil pagan traditions in Halloween. And they purposely uh, ignore or reject the calendar of our Creator that says these are the days these holy days, these set-apart days, these appointments that I want you to keep. Completely living against this. I would submit that most Christians are worse than non-Christians because the Christians are hypocrites because they say they love Yeshua, they accept Yeshua, but they don't follow Yeshua. At least a new angel will reject him and say, I don't want to follow him. But I'm telling you here, look, folks. It says clearly in scriptures, it says, Our Creator will teach sinners the way. He'll teach sin is the way. In Hosea it says, My people destroy for lack of knowledge because they have rejected. They have rejected the word. Or they have forgotten. You can only forget something you once knew, and you can only reject something that's given to you. And it says here, He will teach sinners in the, uh, the way. The way of Yeshua, the Messiah. He will teach them the way. And what happens when, they, when you listen? What happens when you acknowledge? What happens when you want to learn? Well, it goes down to verse 9. It says, he will guide the meek in justice, and he will teach the meek his way. That should be our greatest desire in life, to learn his way. To, to learn his way. That's the only way to success. That's the only way to be rich, because it's not about having some, some paper in your pocket with numbers on it. No, it's to learn his way, to desire to, to learn it and live it. That's it. That's the way to be rich, because you are truly storing a treasures up in, in the kingdom to come. Verse 10 says uh, of Psalms 25, All the paths of Yahweh are mercy and truth to those keeping his covenant and his testimonials. Transfer that. All the paths of Yahweh are true, uh, mercy and truth to those keeping his covenant or his Torah or his guidelines and instructions. It says it right there. I'm not making this up. So all these paths that equal to mercy and truth come by keeping the guidelines and instructions of wonderful creator. That's why I say we're not saved by doing works. We're saved by the blood of Yeshua who died for us. We don't keep the guideline instruction because we want to be saved. We keep the guideline instructions because we are saved. That's the idea. That's, that's, that's the heart we need. That's what we need to understand. So the greatest thing we need to do is to is to to understand, to seek His will. To seek His will. And His will tells us to repent for our sins, to turn to Yeshua, the only way to salvation, and I will offer you a future and a hope. But here's what it comes down to, folks. Here's what it comes down to. We live in a world today where we fear man, we fear everything of man, but we have no fear of our Creator. If we had a fear of our Creator, we would be so in a hurry to learn and get right with his ways, with his guidelines and instructions. That's not, that's not happening out there. We go to Psalms 25, 14. 25, 14, it says, The secret of our Creator is those who fear him, he will make them known his covenant. You see, that's, that's what's happening right now. There are so many believers out there, so many Christians, so many people that love Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, so many of you, but your eyes have not been opened. Your eyes have not been opened. And I've interviewed many Christians out there who have been living against the guidelines and instructions and the Torah of our Creator for many, many years. And these, some of these are Bible scholars reading the Bible over and over again. But their eyes had not been opened. Their eyes were not opened. And why? Well, the answer is right here in verse 14 of Psalm 25. The secret of Yahweh is with those who fear him. Those who fear him. That's when your eyes will become open. And he will make them known his covenant. That's it. You don't have to listen to some pastor who's teaching you against the word to think you know scripture or, or something. No. You read his word and it says, fear him. It says in the scriptures, the wisdom of man is the fear of Yahweh. We need to fear a wonderful creator, folks. That's what we need to do. Not man, not the ways of this world. No, have faith 
that he will direct our paths if we do not lean on our own understanding and let him show us the way of what's right and he will bless us abundantly. So that's what the Bible is. It's blessings or curses. That's it. There's no neutrality with scripture. It says in the Bible, it says, you know, you're either for him or against him. You can't be neutral. If you're neutral, you're against him. You're either for him or against him. And we need to fear him and fear his ways. It says in Psalms 9.10, And those who know your name will put their trust in you. For you, Yahweh, have not forsaken those who seek you. And I ask you today, I ask everyone that's watching, are you seeking our wonderful creator? How much time are you investing in, in, in your desire to seek him, to follow him, to know him? How much time are you investing compared to the time you're doing with other things? And how well do you know other things versus what you know him? When it says in the Bible, my people destroyed for lack of knowledge, they're not talking about knowledge because we have worldly knowledge. They're talking about knowledge about the Torah, about his word, his guidelines, and his instructions. We have, we have all the discipline we need. We have all the memory we need. We have all the knowledge we desire. But we need to put our focus in his word. We need to put our focus in him. We need to remember what Yeshua did for us. We need to have faith and trust and go off what he wants us to do, not what we want to do. Recently, I was in a, in a situation where I was very uh, moved by something, and, and, and it wasn't of Yahweh. And somebody reminded me, you know, everything I talk about, everything the Bible talks about, to put our trust in him, to put our trust in Yahweh. And I did, and everything was lifted off me, and I felt just wonderful. And guess what? He took care of everything. And it's not a surprise and it's not a miracle. That's what he promises us. He says, follow me. Let me lead your path. Let him be the leader, folks. But we need to love him enough and learn about him and fear him. And that's what we need to do. And that's what I want to encourage people to do. And I think it's a great step for people to accept Yeshua as the only path, the only way. The one you call Jesus. The only path and the only way to salvation is through him. But before that, we need repentance. We need a repenting heart, a heart of sorrow for, for, for how we've been living so against him for all our life, for all these years, and for seeking the easy road or the way that we think is best and not seeking him to seek, to, to seek, seek the way that, that he knows is best and the path that he wants us to take. Remember, his secret is, the secret of Yahweh is those who fear him and he will make them known his covenant. He will open your eyes. He will open your eyes. Oh, the scripture said, open your eyes and show me new things in your Torah that I've never seen before. You never stop. I met a Christian. She said she's been a Christian for over 20 or 30 years and she's never read the whole Bible. And I'm saying, not only read it once, read it and then read it again and then read it again and read it again and keep reading it. You never stop. Never forget. And I'll tell you this, if somebody truly did that you knew died for you, I promise you'd be You'd be thinking about that person around the clock. And if there was a way to please that person, you'd get it done. If there's a way to honor that person who died for you, you'd get it done. If you're standing on the corner and a car comes up to you and somebody comes out and puts a gun to your head and about to pull the bullet, and then, uh, and then somebody jumps in front and takes that bullet for you, even if that person was a stranger, you don't forget that. You don't forget that. You want to go back and learn about this stranger who saved your life. That's what you want to do. And you want to honor that person somehow, some way. While well, Creator left us this great treasure, the words that Yeshua, our Messiah, who died for us, spoke and showed us how to live and how our heart should be and what to do in our life and our walk and what we should be doing every day, how we should be doing it, and the consequences or the blessings that are going to come from either of these. The rain that's going to come from, from, from fearing our Creator and, and the plants will grow and it says plant gardens and eat the food they produce. Versus us relying on man, not on the rain, not on the food that he said to eat, but relying on man, and then we end up in a hospital with some disease or something else. You know, and the doctors aren't saying there's a future and a hope. The doctors are saying it's over. Make make your arrangements. It's over. Because they don't they don't have the the amazing ability, uh, the, for the of the power that Yeshua possessed, and that we have the opportunity to have that same power. And all it takes is, is, is faith. We need to have faith that he is who he says he is. And we can do all he says we can do. 
So it takes faith and not just, even the smallest amount of faith, which so many of us lack today. So many Christians lack faith today. Yeshua would said even to his, his disciples in the boat before he calmed down the storm. Such lack of faith you have. You're with me and you don't even see these things. And then you have uh, the, the non-belief Romans and, and the generals of the Roman army coming up to him, telling him to heal, heal the children. You don't even have to come here, Yeshua. Just heal them and they'll be healed. Just say they're healed. That's faith. Yeshua even said, I've never seen such great faith like this in all the land. It's not about lip service, folks. It's not about saying you accept Yeshua and, and, and you think everything's going to change and be great and wonderful. No, and if things do become great and wonderful in your life, something is not going on right because his path never promised a great and wonderful thing. His past promised that he'll always be with us and get us through those hard times. He didn't say those hard times were going to go away. But he would get us through those hard times. And if we make the right choice, he will bless us in the long run. See, that's what happened. Many believers, they, they, they think they, they know him and a hard time comes and they pray to him and they don't hear an answer and they don't have faith that he's there. And then they try to take over themselves. No, we need to trust him and have faith in him. And then he will truly show us a more excellent way than we could ever have imagined. Because it's according to his plan, not our plan. Hallelujah, like I said, means praise a wonderful creator. And if you're listening today and, and you have a relationship with Yeshua, the one they call Jesus, that's wonderful. I want to encourage you to get into the word and continue to fear him and continue to learn the ways of the Bible, the ways of our creator, and not the ways of man. And if you're listening today and, and, and you've given up, you used to be a believer, but you've given up that this is true because you haven't seen answers. Well, his timing is different than our timing, but his timing is real and it will happen. You need to have faith first for it to happen. You can't just sit around waiting and giving up too soon. Have patience. And if you're listening today and you don't believe any of this and you never heard of a, uh, that our creator is only one way and you believe there's many different ways, what do you have to lose by trying this? What do you have to lose? I'll tell you, people are willing to lose their lives because they know this is true. So what do you have to lose uh, here to, to, to do this? Because they're gaining a life in eternity. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. And it is real. It is very real. If it wasn't real, people wouldn't be getting killed over this. Because the enemy doesn't want us to, to, to know these things. And he wants our eyes to stay closed. But we focus on our Creator and He will open up our eyes Fear our Creator. That is the secret. That is the treasure of man. And He will direct our paths. Hallelujah. All right, everybody. There it was. Thank you for checking it out. If, and remember, put your comments or questions below the video. Have faith. Trust Him. And remember, we're only here for a short time, but we have an eternity waiting for us. So thank you for watching today. And check out my other videos on the site. Until then, have a great day. And shalom, shalom. Come out of the world, oh my people, seek the truth, avoid the evil, learn Yahweh's ways, Torah life ministries, come out of the world. Oh.